the launch of the James Webb Telescope has become a major event in the world of science. But as it always happens, the hype has calmed down. And in the minds of many people, the importance of the telescope lies somewhere between the new iPhone and the invention of the smart toilet. To think so is a real crime. And in the next couple of minutes, we'll tell you how the James Webb Telescope will change the world. After all, we already have a president. I speak about the Hubble Telescope, which has been working in Earth orbit for 32 years now. During this time, the telescope has truly changed our understanding of the cosmos. Let's start with the fact that thanks to Hubble, we learn the age of the universe. It's a little under 13.8 billion years old. And this is just one of hundreds of telescope discoveries. Hubble helped prove the expansion of the universe and the rate at which it is happening. Hubble discovered that there are black holes at the center of almost every galaxy. Hubble proved the existence of exoplanets. The list can go on for another 30 minutes. And don't forget about the incredible photographs from the telescope. They're familiar to all of us as proof of Hubble's contributions to science. But not everyone understands how serious everything is. To understand this, let's go to the end of 1995. Robert Williams was one of the leaders of the Hubble Telescope program at the time. And a crazy, by the standards of that time, thought came to him. Point the telescope at an empty region of space. There were a lot of such regions on the map in 1995, and it was believed that the universe was full of holes. Scientists tried to make the most of Hubble for photographs of galaxies, star clusters, and other interesting objects. But Williams decided to spend 342 precious frames to photograph the void. Sounds stupid, doesn't it? The astronomer aimed Hubble at an area of the starry sky, an area equal to a grain of rice. And what was the surprise of scientists when more than 1,500 galaxies were found in the grain, which all world science considered empty for a hundred years? Moreover, the most distant of them formed almost immediately after the Big Bang. Since then, the Hubble telescope has been actively used just to observe seemingly empty areas of space. Programs Deep Field, Frontier Fields, and the others have been trying to make the most detailed maps of the starry sky for 30 years. Needless to say, it turned out great. If only during one session in it was discovered one and a half hundreds of galaxies. Hubble is incredibly productive, and one has only to calculate what part of the visible universe we have already studied with its help. If Hubble explored 90% of the starry sky, then the James Webb Telescope is not so useful, is it? Dr. Casey Hanmer was puzzled by this question. He asked himself this question and compiled a map of all the frames ever made by the Hubble telescope. The task was not easy because the telescope made almost one and a half million of them. It turned out such a black and white thing where at first glance it is clear that not everything has been studied. But the professor's further calculations turned out to be even worse. For 32 years of daily fruitful work without interruption, Hubble studied only 0.8% of the starry sky. Think for a second to fully understand this fact. All the incredible telescope discoveries, pictures, black holes, exoplanets, distant stars and galaxies are only 0.8% of what can be seen. Of course, this is not a reason to blame the Hubble telescope for not working well. It works great. Enough discoveries have been made. And the trouble is that not all of the one and a half million photographs were taken of unique areas. Of course, Hubble photographed the Andromeda galaxy, Pluto, and other objects a thousand times. Therefore, the number of frames affecting the unique regions of space is, of course, less. Here we come to the James Webb Telescope. 99.2% of the starry sky is still unexplored, despite the daily operation of the planet's main telescope and the question of whether another telescope is needed disappears by itself. Of course it is needed. Hundreds of unexplored regions of space store discoveries. But can James Webb make them? This is a question for the answer to which it is worth returning to the capabilities of the telescope. Hubble and James Webb cannot be directly compared. This equipment is for different tasks. But if you omit complex technical terms, then in simple words, you can say that yes, the James Webb telescope is much better. Its mirror is three times larger than the one in Hubble, and that means he will be able to collect much more light. In addition, the technological progress of the last 30 years is visible in every smartphone or car, and you don't need to be an academic to understand that the materials, electronics, and even the whole concept of the new telescope are on the edge of modern technology. So even simple logic will tell you that since the Hubble telescope has studied less than a percent of the starry sky in 32 years, the new telescope will at least continue its work 
and will do it more productively. And that means the discoveries will be poured one by one. And from this point, we can go without special terms. And first of all, we'll talk about redshift. Light, no matter how fast and intangible it is, is also not omnipotent. Therefore, in fact, in the night sky, some stars look brighter and some dimmer, and the colors are generally lost, and you can see them only in astrophotographies with good exposure. Unless the brightest objects in space, like the Pleiades, are seen as blue even to the naked eye, the vast majority of light from space dims while reaching us. Because it's hard to go far, and only our parents went to school a million light years away in childhood, light is not that strong. And the further the object we look at, the harder it is to see it in the optical spectrum. And even a special optics won't help. If a distant galaxy or star moves away too quickly, the light that comes from them goes out of the visible spectrum into the red or even infrared part of the spectrum. Actually, the Hubble telescope runs into this issue when searching for the most ancient objects in space. Its equipment simply cannot see the light from the most distant galaxies and stars, which has gone deep into the infrared spectrum. And this task is very important, because the farther the object, the further we look into the past. In 2021, Hubble, with incredible effort, reached the star Arendelle, nearly 13 billion years old. This star formed almost immediately after the Big Bang. The galaxies are slightly larger and easier to see. Therefore, the most distant galaxy known to man, HD1, is even further away, at 13.5 billion light years. It may be one of the first after the Big Bang. Now remember that we are discussing 0.8% of the starry sky, and that the equipment of the James Webb Telescope is primarily made for the infrared range. That means that it must be easy for it to shoot such distant objects. And this is no longer empty talk. Recently, the James Webb Telescope team announced the end of focus calibration. In honor of this, the guys shared a photo of part of the large Magellanic Cloud. And then they realized that other infrared telescopes had photographed it at one time. The internet quickly dug up footage of Spitzer and Wise and compared it to the image of James Webb. We think that comments are unnecessary. Instead of dots in terrible quality, the new telescope sees an incredibly clear picture with much more detail. And by the way, the photo of the most distant galaxy at the moment was taken partly with the help of the Spitzer telescope. The one in the comparison photo is in the middle. Imagine how much more detailed the picture will be from James Webb when it aims at the same point. Actually, this has already been announced as one of the first tasks of the telescope. You will first look again at the Arendel star and the HD1 galaxy to check the data. And secondly, it will look for even more distant objects. And that James Webb can definitely do. So if your bookmaker accepts bets on the soonest discovery of the most distant stars and galaxies, feel free to bring money. Almost immediately, a new space technology will blow the scientific community by looking into the past incredibly close to the Big Bang. Unfortunately, the explosion itself and the first moments after it will not work. The universe was too dense and hot, and even the light was locked in with no way out. So the maximum that we can count on is to see one of the first galaxies or even stars. That will be the key discovery of the world of science. After all, scientists will evaluate a star and figure out how other stars, planets, and in the end, we are formed from the chaotic mess of matter. The ability of the James Webb Telescope is to detect not just light, but also various chemical elements, it is the basis for the second monumental discovery that he's able to make. In short, oxygen, helium, methane, and other elements can be smelled with telescopes. Not literally, of course. It's just that the elements emit radiation at different wavelengths. And looking at data from telescopes, scientists can easily tell if there are traces of oxygen, helium, or anything else in the collected radiation. This is not a poppycock, but rather an easy task accessible even to amateur astronomers. There are many filters and guides that allow you to separate the radiation of some chemical elements from others. Therefore, in fact, the image of the same galaxy performed by two different photographers can give different colors. It's just that one worked on one wavelength and the other on another. Actually, James Webb in this regard is the most advanced telescope. It, like Hubble, does not suffer from the Earth's atmosphere, which blocks some types of radiation. But unlike Hubble, James Webb is specially tuned for the detection of these very waves. Why is it so important? Because if you sniff the Earth from deep space in this way, then traces of biological activity will be evident. And a hypothetical alien with a telescope will say that this planet near the Sun most likely has life. 
Scientists plan to do exactly the same thing with the help of the James Webb Telescope. The problem is only in determining a clear algorithm that makes it possible to judge the presence of life by radiation. There is no magic wand like water and oxygen. There are plenty of them in space. The same asteroid series can be sniffed and come to the conclusion that there is a lot of water there, which means there is life, which might be a mistake. So astronomers were racking their brains over which combination of which elements should be considered a sign of the presence of life. In the end, they settled on methane. This gas is the most obvious sign of biological activity. Bacteria throw plenty of it into the atmosphere. But there are nuances here too, because context is also important. Only by itself, methane means nothing. At the moment, scientists have developed a dozen different models, and they plan to test them just with the help of the James Webb Telescope. There is even suggestion that it will prove the existence of life in space in the very first days of work. This is, of course, optimism. But the optimism is backed by facts. For theoretically, the equipment of the telescope makes it possible to judge the presence of the necessary elements with incredible accuracy. And most importantly, the infrared range in which James Webb will work is useful not only in the study of distant objects, it also allows you to search for dim objects near bright ones. This is almost impossible in the optical range. Imagine that you're looking for mercury on the disk of the sun at noon. You will see nothing but bright light. But James Webb's infrared equipment is better suited for this task. He can also open bunches of exoplanets. Moreover, along the way, sniffing them and giving scientists a complete package of data on chemical elements. In general, the conditions for finding life are available. And finally, we would like to talk about other and perhaps the main discoveries of James Webb. In almost every video, we mention that you don't have to go far to be called the new Kepler or Herschel. There are still a lot of mysteries in our own solar system. James Webb will also work on them. Even the exact numbers are known. 7% of the telescope's time will be devoted to the solar system. And this drives scientists into ecstasy. Uranus, for example, we visited only once and only in transit. Nothing is known about this planet. Meanwhile, the equipment of James Webb, according to scientists, seem to have been created for the study of Uranus. All bonuses of infrared and analysis of the atmosphere of distant objects work even better for close objects. Humanity will finally be able to get to know Neptune, Uranus, the moons of Jupiter, and even Mars closer. We have been looking for life on the red planet for 200 years. James Webb can sniff exoplanets elsewhere in the galaxy, and it is obvious that thinking about Mars, the telescope will do this in the most detailed way. We will also learn about the presence of methane there, which was spotted back in 2008. But since then, scientists still cannot determine the causes. The same applies for asteroids, minor planets, and comets in the solar system. The James Webb Telescope will also study them, giving scientists the most detailed spectral analysis. Due to its advancement, even repeated photos of objects that Hubble has already looked at will sparkle with new colors and the commissioning of a new telescope in the coming years will change astronomy beyond recognition. We will keep our finger on the pulse of events and will be glad to see your upvotes and comments on this matter. See you next time, friends.